The Wonder of a Spider's Silk. Welcome to Nugget 382. What will we be talking about today? Well, we're going to talk about spiders and how they make silk and make webs and why. Well, that sounds interesting. A lot of people don't like spiders. What's that called when you're afraid of spiders? Yeah, arachnophobia? Yeah, a lot of people are afraid of them. I don't like them. A lot them. of people are. And I do normally kill them if I see one because I've been... You get bit or stung by a spider, which is it? You get bit. God says they're good. I know. <laughs> but getting bit by a spider isn't often No, good. no, it's not. Especially when you're sleeping. Oh, let's not think about that. According to researchers at the University of Bristol in the UK, published in Current Biology, they say this about spiders, that spiders use electricity to fly. They do. Ballooning first was documented in the 17th century. Well, what spiders do, they call it ballooning, and we'll get into that here in a little bit. And they've been knowing about it for centuries. And they can fly at altitudes of almost five kilometers for hundreds of kilometers? Yes, they can. And different hairs on their legs can feel for the electricity, and they can feel for wind. Different ones. Fascinating. I could say something right now about hairy legs, but I won't. It'll probably not be appropriate. We'll, we'll stick to <laughs> spiders' hairy legs. Maybe true. At least seven silk gland types have been identified. No known kind of spider produces all seven. Well, that's incredible. Yes. What exactly does a spider use the silk for? Well, he makes webs, he catches prey, he produces egg sacs, can jump and drop, escaping from predators, and they use it for mating. One of the best things about the silk is that it is sticky. Except when you're hiking. Walk into a web and you will discover this for yourself. A fly flying full speed into the web will find he is no match for the silk. Have you ever seen a bug? Catches them in a hurry. Have you ever seen a bug stuck in a oh, spider absolutely. web? Oh, absolutely. And this article written not too long ago in just February of 2024, and it says, Uncle Sam explores satellites that can create propellant out of thin air. Uncle Sam as in America? As in America. Okay. Of course, this article says they're looking to do it. They've been doing this for a long time. They can actually propel satellites based on the same principle that spiders use. There have been many examples of of animals of various kinds, creatures, that man studies to find out how we can do what they do. Well, doesn't the Bible say that there's nothing new under the sun? Any Correct. technology will just be mimicking something that God has done out Absolutely. of nature. Absolutely. We even saw the ulexite and selenite, which is sometimes called TV rock, and it shows that God had fiber optics. So yes. we just copy God because he is the creator of everything. Correct. And we need you to stop and subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. Please do. And watch our other videos, all on creation versus evolution. But back to spiders. All spiders make silk, but not all spin webs. Several varieties of spiders do not make webs. Well, I was wondering about that because I see in your list here, you've got the Texas brown tarantula. We were driving on the border on one of the most beautiful highways in West Texas one afternoon, and we saw one of those tarantulas. And that's what I was asking you to do. Even tarantulas spin webs, and thanks for answering that question. They do not. They are really quite beautiful when you think about them, when you look at them close. Well, I was just about to say they're beautiful at a distance. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about these webs and the silk. The silk is strong, but it's flexible. They say it's at least five times as strong as steel. It's twice as elastic as nylon. It's waterproof. It's tougher than Kevlar. It's okay. some amazing stuff. How can it be tougher than Kevlar? That seems that's, like a bit much, doesn't it? They actually make bulletproof vests out of spider silk. I see this article. It says that spider silk is five times stronger than steel. Now, scientists know why. Thousands of tiny nanostrands make up larger silken cables. That's just incredible, isn't it? Kind of like a piece of wire, huh? Stronger than steel and tougher than Kevlar? Scientists shed new light on the strongest spider silk in the world. Amazing. It's amazing stuff. Okay. And they just do it because they do it. They just make it, eject it out just because they can. And they use it. Well, it's their home and their, isn't it the way that they get prey? Yeah, they trap prey. Sometimes they wrap them up. They use it for mating. They have all kinds of uses for the silk that they create. You're making me feel bad when we knock them down when we're hiking. I know, but they're kind of in the way. Yeah, they need to not go across the trail. True. How they get across the trail is amazing. Numerous scientists aspire to unlock the remarkable capability of spiders to spin silk threads that are immensely strong, lightweight, and flexible. In fact, pound for pound, 
spider silk is stronger than steel and tougher than Kevlar. However, no one has been able to replicate the spider's work yet. Okay, well, that helps explain that's amazing, it. it. It's pound for pound. Right. But that's amazing. Nobody can figure out how they do it. They can't reproduce it yet. The marvelous creator did that. Yes. If we ever manage to develop a synthetic equivalent with these characteristics, a whole new world of possibilities may open. Artificial spider silk could replace materials like Kevlar, polyester, and carbon fiber in industries and be used, for example, to make lightweight and flexible bulletproof vests. They already are. No one can duplicate the properties of spider silk, nor what the spider makes without even thinking about it. That's because that's what God told him to do. Yes, he did. That's what he and she, do both of them make they silk? They do. And how does the spider make silk? God created them with special glands that produce a liquid protein series. When these proteins are mixed, the new mixture hardens. It's very similar to the way that epoxy works. Spider silk can actually stop a 747. Not sure how that is, but they do claim that. But also more. Spider silk is now being used to make body armor. Body armor made from spider silk is in serious development, and it is not as far-fetched as it may seem. A decade from now, the military may be ordering this incredibly lightweight body armor for the troops. The latest type of armor being considered by the U.S. Army is not at all what you would expect. It's not some tough new chemical composition or porcelain to replace aramid. It's actually spider silk. So one question that will come up is, how can the spider itself travel across the web? Well, he tiptoes delicately from thread to thread. There are two types of webbing, sticky and non-sticky. How big of a magnifying glass do you have to have to see that a spider is walking on his tiptoes? They tip do, toes? they do. To gently step. How do they build a web? First, a single silk strand is attached between two supports, and we'll get to how they put them there in just a minute. The building is similar to spokes of a bicycle wheel. These main structures are made up of non-sticky silk. How do they get the silk where they want it? The first step is they reach up with the front legs to feel for the electricity. The second step is they turn and shoot the triangular silk that catches that electricity. And the next is to ride it to its location. Have you ever wondered how a path 10 or 12 or 20 feet wide on a hiking trail can have a spider web all the way across it? They can shoot it straight up, drive up, hook it, attach it, and then follow it down and then take it over to the other tree and do the same thing and get it all the way across. It's amazing. That is why when a spider goes to get the trapped prey, he travels along the spokes of the web. It's non-sticky. But if he does happen to step on a sticky one, it's not that big a deal because he is just tiptoeing. They say it's a lot like when we just step on some gum in a parking lot. It's kind of a nuisance, but it's not a problem. A spider has other options in gathering prey other than his sticky web. Number one, they can reach out and grab insects. Next, they can use electrostatic charge. Electrostatic charge can cause the web to bend toward an electrically charged insect. So ballooning is the term that's used when they start a web and they cross from one place to well, another? Well, when they, quote, fly, when they fly off the ground. The atmosphere has a 100 volts per meter increase all the way up. So really, this is quite amazing when you think about it. Electricity in the atmosphere... And this is from Caltech, the Feynman Lectures on Physics by Richard Feynman of the California Institute of Technology. And one of the things they point out is this statement that on an ordinary day over flat desert country, I'll take that, or over the sea as one goes upward from the surface of the ground, the electrical potential increases by about 100 volts per meter. And a meter's a little over three feet, right? Right. And most people don't think about that kind of thing, but there is certainly electricity in the atmosphere. And that's what these spiders are using as they're ballooning. Correct. I want to know, what does a spider do with his old abode? He eats the silk. The spider reuses the protein from the old silk and sends it to the silk glands to be recycled. Absolutely a design that only God could do. And the whole process takes only about 30 minutes. We read in Genesis 1.25, And God made the beast of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good. Yeah, God said that little furry creature is good, huh? 
And that is that tarantula that we saw that time out west of Big Bend. We did. Next time you look at a spider, don't panic and get all excited and scream and all that kind of thing. Look at him and notice how awesome he is and just realize that God made him and he said he was good. I'm adding that if he's in your house or your car, you might want to go ahead and squish him. Yeah, there are times. All right. Well, thank you. (laughs)